Hello guys, so welcome back to our uh, lecture 11. And we're going to continue the discussion about clipping. So uh, last time we explored negative clipping. Okay. And till this moment in our clipping discussion, which is a lot of discussion so far, we have either positive clipping or negative clipping. A clipping that happens uh, most of our cycle or the negative of cycle. We didn't have both. And here is one approach that you can uh, have a circuit that is that gives you positive and the negative clipping at the same time, okay? And it's really basic, a very simple approach, just to put the, you know, the two uh, configurations that gives you the, the positive and negative clipping in parallel to each other, okay? So if you remember, guys, this was giving us a positive clipping. If you checked back the clipping circuit that we discussed, and also this was give, giving you a negative clipping. Again, if you go back and check, this was, you know, just the last uh, video. And uh, the discussion here is also simple. So it's basically, uh, we, wanna, we wanted to search for the input at which D1 will conduct, uh, or the range of inputs we can say, at which D1 will conduct and the other range of inputs at which D2 will, will conduct, okay? In order, let's do that in the simple approach, okay? So uh, this is a ground, as you see, guys. So this point here is VB1 as a voltage. Why? Because this is a ground, it's a negative circuit, is a negative determinant of the battery. So the positive is greater than the negative by the battery uh, voltage, which is VB1 here. So this should be VB1. Then for, for D1 to conduct, this must be greater than this by a 0.7. So this must be VB1 plus 0.7 or greater, okay? That's, that's basically what's, what's gonna happen. So we need this point to, v, to be VB1 or greater. So in order for D1 to turn on, Let's call this point here uh, K, for example. VK must be greater than or equal to VB1 plus point seven. How about D2? So again, this is zero. So this one here, must be less than zero by VB2. So this should be or must be minus VB2. So for D2 conduct, this point, which is again VB, uh, VK, should be less than, because this is the N. We want this to go down in voltage. We want it to be less than the B side. So this should be less than minus VB2 minus 0.7. Remember, minus VB2, which is uh, this point, which is the B terminal, minus, minus, that, minus that, kind, that, that term, which is minus minus will be positive all the time. So VB2 will go with VB2 and you will have 0.7, which is the required voltage for the battery to conduct. So in order for D2 this time to turn on, VK must be less than or equal to VB2 minus VB2 minus V3. Because we have here VB1 is four and V2, VB2 is four. So this is basically 4.7 and this is basically minus 4.7. So, so when the input is greater than 4.7, D1 will conduct. And when the when input is less than minus 4.7 or minus VK uh, or minus VB2 minus, v, uh, minus 0.7, D2 will conduct. So let's write this also. This is important. So number one, when the input greater than or equal to VB1 plus 0.7, which is 4.7, D1 will be on. And when the input is less than 
minus B, VB2 minus 0.7, which is minus 4.7, D2 will be on. What happened to D2 when V input is greater than uh, 4.7? It will be off because basically we want VB2 to be less than minus 4.7. So uh, to, uh, to, to make D2 conductor or turn on. And when the input is equal to 4.7 or larger, this is basically greater than minus 4.7. So it will be off. So in that time, D2 will be off. How about in the other case? When the input is less than or equal to minus 4.7, basically D1 will be off because D1 needs the input to be greater than or equal to 4.7. And it's now and minus 4.7 and, and lower is basically much lower than 4.7. So at that time, D1 will, will be off. Okay. So let's explore what's going to happen to the circuit. And what, what's, there is another range here that is, you know, missing. What happened in between? Okay. So number three. When V input, let's write this. Uh, when V input is, uh, you know, neither, neither. I mean, in the in between VB1 and VB, VB1 plus 0 0.7 and uh, minus VB1 minus 0 0.7. So when VB input is greater than minus 4.7 and less than 4.7, what's going to happen? So in that range, both are off. So D1 and D2 both off okay both are off so in that circuit there are three regions so remember in all other uh, circuits that we discussed so far we usually say when the input is greater than the input minimum this is a range and we solve for it then when the input is less than the input minimum and this is another range and usually we have two regions region for which the input is greater than the input minimum this is the on you know and you have some specific output, which, which would, would be the clipping. And another range in which the input is less than the input minimum, you know, uh, in which D will be off and you have another output. Okay. And for, for the negative clipping, you have this V input maximum. When the input is greater than the input maximum, that is off. When the input is less than the input maximum, that is on. And you have two, two outputs. Here we have three outputs. You know, because you have three ranges, okay? So let's check all of them. So let's start by uh, the first one. Number one here, when the input is greater than or equal to 4.7. So we said that D1 will be on and D2 will be off. Okay, remember VO, you know, is in parallel with both branches, either this branch or this branch. You just look at the branch that we want to determine VO. So just look at the branch that will give you information. You know, you can solve the circuit from here or here. Maybe this is not solvable, but, but for maybe for the other branch is solvable. So we're gonna see now. So since D1 is on, then VD1 equal to 0.7 volt. And what is V V output? If we look, V output is VB1 plus VD1. V output equal to VD1 plus VB1. It's known now. So you can determine V of that branch, but you can't you can't determine it from the other branch because you don't know VD2 basically. It's off. So here VD1 is 0.7 because D1 is on. And VB1 is four. This is a given in the example. So this will be 4.7 volt. Okay, that's good. So we know the output, it's constant. It's basically, this is a clipping. This is basically the positive clipping in our example, as we will see. Because for all the values of the input that is greater than 4.7, the output will be constant. So this is a clipping, 4.7. How about VR? So let's again look at the Kirchhoff. So this is uh, 
the input and this is the R here and this is the O. So all the time the input is equal to from KVL the input equal to the O plus the R. So from here the R equal to the input minus 4.7. Whatever the input is, just subtract uh, 4.7 or VB plus 0.7. That's the first range. Let's now check the second range. When the input less than minus 4.7, we said that D2 will be on and D1 will be off. Again, we want to determine the R and the O. Okay. Now we can determine the O from the first branch, which is which has D1 but we can determine it from the second branch here. Since D2 is on, we know VD, it's 0.7. And of course, VB is, VB2 is, is constant, it's all the time four. So we can, we can determine VO. So let's determine VO. From here, VO is equal to minus VB2 minus VD2, because they are all in the same, you know, uh, the all uh, rounding in uh, counterclockwise. So from KVL, from that, loop here from KVL, we can say that VO plus uh, VD2 plus VB2 equal to zero. So VO is equal to minus VD2 minus VB2. So it's equal to minus four or minus, let's write it in order. So minus 0.7 because D2, D2 is on. Sorry, again, D2 is on minus four. So minus 4.7. So VO is constant equal to minus 4.7. And this is basically clipping for all the values of the input in which the input is less than minus 4.7, the output is constant, clipped. So this is basically the negative clipping this time. Okay. How about VR? Again, you have the same Kirchhoff. So from the same Kirchhoff voltage low, again, KVL here will give us that V input equal to VO, VO plus VR. So from here, VR equal to uh, V input minus VO. VO is minus 4.7, so minus minus will be positive. So positive. 4.7. Okay, that's good. Now the third and last range. Number three. When V input in between, it's less than V input minimum of D1 and greater than V input maximum of V2. Remember, with positive clipping, we have V input minimum. With, with negative clipping, we have the input maximum. We have two thresholds now, one for the D1 and one for D2. So when the input is, you know, greater than minus 4.7 and less than 4.7. One may say, what happened at 4.7? 4.7 or minus 4.7 is a transition point, okay? So at that point, the diet will start to conduct. So it will have a voltage of 0.7, either D1 or D2, but the, the current will be still zero. It's a transition point, okay? So let's see, for that range here, both D1 and D2 are off. Okay, so both D1 and D2 are off, okay? So in that case here, uh, when both are off, so uh, ID1 is zero and the ID2 is zero. So let's assume that there is a current here in the, in, the, in the resistor called I. So I is basically equal to ID1 plus ID2. So since both are zeros, so I equal to ID1 plus ID2 equal to zero. So I is equal to zero. So VR, which is IR, equal to zero. So based on that, 
we know from Kirchhoff voltage law again that V input equal to VR plus VO, VR now zero. So VO equal to V input. That's it. So we have three regions. We determine VO and the VR in the three regions. Now we plot them. So let's plot all of them. So let's start by locating the thresholds, okay? So we have the first threshold at 4.7. Uh, let's assume this point, uh, mm, that one, for example, this is four point, it's a, just a assumption, 4.7. And this is, uh, let's do it with two colors. Maybe that will be better and more clear. So for example, red and the blue, whatever. Okay. So 4.7 here. This is the first point. It's a very threshold, we can say. And let's also make vertical lines. Then the other threshold at minus 4.7, let's make it with green, minus 4.7. Okay, now we have the three regions. Okay, so let's draw them with black, for example. So where is the region in which V input is greater than 4.7? This is basically this region. So from here, let's continue with red. Yeah, so. This is region one, the input greater than 4.7. And this is the second region. In which the input is less than minus 4.7. They are equal in weights, of course, because VB1 is equal to VB2. They might be different, that's fine. Okay. Now, where is the region in which uh, V input in between? So that's basically the third region, which uh, let's make it uh, uh, with another color, like uh, our normal color, for example. So basically, let's call it number three. So this is number three. This is also belong to number three. And this is also belonging to number three. I am doing it all, all the time for one cycle. And of course, this is a periodic signal. So what happened for the first cycle will happen again for the second cycle, third cycle, whatever, and so on. Okay. Now let's do, uh, you know, first, second, and third region. So let's start with the first one. Let's see what will be uh, VO and VD and VO. So in the first region, VO is 4.7, constant equal to 4.7. Let's do with it, it with, uh, with blue, for, or blue, of course, whatever. So in the first region, VO is 4.7. This is 4.7, and it's constant equal to 4.7. And VR uh, is V input minus 4.7. So here is the input in that region, that, that triangle. So in, for each point on that triangle, subtract 4.7. So for example, this point is 4.7 exactly. When you subtract 4.7, it will give you zero. So the first point, let's do that with another color like red. So the first or another color like cyan, for example, not to confuse. So the first point is zero. 
And you're gonna do the same for the rest of until we reach, you reach the maximum. The maximum is 10. 10 minus 4.7 will give, give you 5.3. Let's see, estimate here. Yeah. And again, this point is 4.7 again. 4.7 minus 4.7 will give you zero. So this is basically, it will give you a triangle. And again, you know, this triangle is exactly that triangle here, okay? Good, let's do now the second region. So let's go to, uh, to blue again. The second region VO is minus 4.7. So, this is the minus 4.7. Constant. How about VO or VR? I'm sorry, VR. So let's go back to sign again. So for VR, VR is V input plus 4.7. So take any, so here is, you know, the input. Take any point from that input and add to it 4.7. So for example, this point is minus 4.7. Plus 4.7, it will give you zero. The first point is zero. This point again is minus 4.7. Plus 4.7, it will give you again zero. This point is minus 10. Minus 10, plus 4.7 will give you 5.3. So basically, that triangle here will be moved, that triangle will be moved like this to the to the horizontal axis. That's that's basically how we move shapes. And again, that triangle is exactly that one. Okay. How about the third region now? In the third region, both are off. So VR is equal to zero. So let's do that first because it's easy. VR is just zero. Of course, all the remaining are the third region. All the remaining regions, like this one, look, and uh, the one in the middle here, number three, which is that one, and you know that one again, is that one, and the v uh, uh, v uh, v o equal to v n. So let's go back to uh, blue again. So VO is equal to VN. So here is VN, for example, in this uh, small period, whatever you have here, copy and paste here. So that's basically that one. Then the second period here, this is the input, that line from that point to that point, that line. So take it and Apply it here. Basically, of course, just you know, uh, connect this point together. And finally, in that region here, again, take this line and add it here. That's basically VO. And again, our last check just to put this here will give you the negative of cycle. And put that here. That will give you the most of cycle. The other one will give you the negative of cycle. Okay, that's basically, guys. You know, uh, the two-way clipping. Here we have clipping at the positive of cycle. So this is a positive clipping, and here is a negative clipping. Okay, and of course, by controlling VB1 and VB2, you will have you know a variety of shapes. Okay, guys, so I hope you understand this material and see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.